topic in our community because like we said before sometimes we're told you know be calm be passive mm -hmm. be this don't tell them how much you want it mm -hmm. it's all of these rules that don't ever fit at all mm -hmm. and I also want to talk about how we like to blame the women for everything yes so our, our so whole society has this like what we now call rape culture where it's a it's cool so if you don't think you co-sign to it if you got an uncle and he got a child with a woman 15, 20 years younger than him. Mm -hmm. That's one of those things that our community is like, oh, that's cool. You could be 13 and your husband or your baby daddy could be 40. Exactly. Where? Or you doing the whole, you know, well, all those men be running after that girl, but she fast. Ain't no child fast enough to get caught by a grown man. Absolutely. Or what was she wearing or... You know what did she say or if you didn't scream or all of those mm -hmm. different things like that you wanted it so many different things like that exactly so let's talk about black sexuality and femininity and the fact that first of all just as young girls were already sexualized and thought to be older so you can have a teenage girl and either they're calling her fast if she's acting a certain way or dressing a certain way mm -hmm. or they're looking at her like, mm, you know, she's going to be hot in the ass. Why? And I have heard that said about oh, little girls. Yes. Don't let you be shapely, which was one of my yes. issues. You know, people saying different things. And if, um, and it, it, don't, it doesn't always come from men. It's the women. That part. It's, it's older that women. Uh, one of my good friends um, at her church, they mm -hmm. had this women's um, event. And she said they had, whoever the speaker was, asked how many if women here either got pregnant before married or you had an abortion and she said almost every woman in the church raised their hand right wow but she said what was sad about that is those same women that had got pregnant out of wedlock Be were the ones the that ones. tore those mm -hmm. younger girls down so it's like you know we we talked uh, you know before about how we have where men are punching us down, but you got other women in that, in that same thing, and it kind of throws off your your understanding of sexuality because it's coming from a person's mm -hmm. perspective that's you know way older than yep. you that lives in a different time, different generation, or um, someone that should be protecting you. Absolutely, you know, because I would even say um, with in my personal situation, mm -hmm. like I say, my grandma was about sixteen. Um, my dad's mom had her first child. She got first pregnant at 13. Mm, so around wow. 16, she um, started saying stuff to me like, I know you sneaking. Or that part. I know you let people climb in out the window. And she was saying things to me in front of my mom. And I'm like, you got to get my ass. Right? I ain't talking to nobody. <laughs> and you know, so I was really upset because I'm mm -hmm. like, mama, you know I'm not. And she was like, you got to understand where she coming from and then she broke it down. Yeah. This is what this is what happened in her life so it's just her perspective. So she just immediately assumed that mm -hmm. I was doing the same things and I wasn't. You know, I did have my mm -hmm. instances with boys, but that stuff she was saying. I yes. was like, "Oh, she about to get me strung up." Well, and you got to also remember if a child because I don't care how grown you feel you are, at 16 you're still a child. Definitely 14, 15, mm -hmm. 13, you are a child. So if a child is exhibiting sexualized um, tendencies or actions, yeah. somebody taught that child that. So why are we always either A, blaming the girl or blaming the woman? I didn't rape myself. Right. And that's one of the things that we, um, like, it's almost like as women, because you're right, a lot of times we put it on ourselves. A lot of times as women, we're holding on to the virtue singling so hard so that nobody looks at us that way that, oh, oh, she a hoe. Really? Is she? 
Because I know quite a few females that she might have been dressing her best life. But she wasn't sneaking, creeping, and doing any dipping with anybody. Mm -hmm. And you know what I learned? So I didn't grow up in church. Mm -hmm. I had my own experience with Christ, you know, in college. And I was so disappointed to know that those main people that were so hard on us about being pure weight, they was fucking, fucking, mm -hmm. fucking. And they had them dresses to the floor Child. with the stockings, the slip, the mm -hmm. whole shebang. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they were the ones that were applying that pressure. So it's just, it's definitely a double-edged sword. And it's, it's harmful to women. It kind of goes it to is. that, you know, that whole uh, aggression that we have toward yes. each other. Yes. Even from, I've noticed with older women, um, like with me being shapely, uh -huh. you know, older, I had an older woman, you know, hit me on the leg when we were when I was in college. You know, you got that big old butt and you got that dress on. You got these men looking at you, and I'm like, and she really would be on me about my butt. And what I was trying to explain to her was, it doesn't matter how big my dress that is. That part. It doesn't matter how big, but she used to make me feel some kind of way about my body. Because she swore that I was making all of the men at church look at me. And but let's 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 look at that statement. You're making all the men at church look at you. They can't control their eyes. They can't control who they're looking at. Even the whole stockings thing. Because I was asking, like, you know, what is the big deal with church and stockings? And so um, this older lady, I never forget, I love Sister Josephine. She was so sweet to me, and she said, well. The explanation I was taught when I was younger was mm -hmm. we had to shave our legs and wear stockings. And I was like, and she said, Man. I said, why shave your legs? Or she said, if you didn't shave, you definitely mm -hmm. had to put the stockings on. Mm -hmm. Because she said that they were told if a man saw the hair on your legs, he would know what the hair on your pubic hair looked like. And I thought that was the most bizarre shit ever. And she said that was what they were taught why they had to wear so everything about how they dress was to mm -hmm. necessarily make them not look presentable to men or or you know or not look like they're asking a man to do something right. but again you're blaming the woman for a man's action like i gotta i gotta do all of these things to keep you from doing something exactly. to me you know exactly like, it's, it's a really crazy amount of pressure um, involved with those things. One of my favorite memes um, was boys will be, and you know how they usually say boys will be boys. Mm -hmm. It was boys will be, and they scratched out the boys, um, and it said, however you raise them. Yep. So if you're raising a boy to think that it's okay to cat call at women, mm -hmm. if you're raising a boy to think that it's okay to go up and smack somebody's ass, who he does not know. Mm -hmm. Like that has happened to me you, on so yes. many occasions. You would not believe. I, I have been out in the last sixty days, mm -hmm. and somebody touched my ass that I don't know. And you know what I mean? Like, and it doesn't matter what you have. It's not like you walking around outside naked. And even if you work, and even women uh -huh. touch me inappropriately, or, or oh, you wow. know different things, and. Um, one thing that I have tried to come to grips with, especially after losing weight, is mm -hmm. I, I hate the attention that my body gets from people. Yeah. Because it like constantly draws out the freakazoids. You know, like mm -hmm. nobody just wants to have a regular conversation. They want to see your ass. They want to touch your mm -hmm. ass. Like it's just crazy. And it's like, yeah. you know, yes, I am a woman. I totally know what my body does, all those things, but is that it? Exactly. In my, in my soul, is that all to me? Like, I feel like all the days of studying, just mm -hmm. doing whatever, like, none of those things matter. Yep. It just matters. You're a girl. You're and a woman. I can't, again, I can't make you do something. I don't care how I'm dressed. Mm -hmm. I don't care how I'm acting. I don't care how I'm dancing. I can't make somebody get in their head. I'm going to take that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that um, I want to get out there is, it's a lot of people suffering from different sexual acts that have been done to them yes. at different time frames in their life. Because no, I didn't experience that as a child, but in college, I was almost raped. Mm -hmm. He just, that by the grace of God, he let me go right before he was about to penetrate me. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, I was like, oh my God, is this man really finna do this to yeah. me? Like, I'm fighting you. I'm trying to get you off and you're still like moving forward. It's just the most crazy, helpless feeling ever. So, you know, it's it, because it's swept under the rug and so mm -hmm. accepted, it just keeps happening. Because the guy that um attempted to rape me, mm -hmm. 
his female and male friends was like, why you gonna call the police on him? He didn't though. And I'm like, y'all home. Y'all gonna co-sign on this? That part. And even one of my friends, well, we aren't friends anymore. We, we weren't friends after this day mm -hmm. from that point because she said to me, well, you was kissing him. You gonna tell the police um, that, you, that that didn't, you know, make him think. And I was like, so bitch, you can't fucking kiss people? That like, part. Like, you know, like us kissing had nothing to do with me wanting to have sex with him. So, and that's something that is also a part of sexuality. Like, I can be intimate with you and not say that you can have my body. That part. You know what I mean? We we can hold hands, we can do all those things. That does not say to you, we about to have sex. Exactly. And that was where the whole no means no came from. Mm -hmm. Like you had some dudes that were like, well, if I just keep trying, mm -hmm. you know, if I just hit that spot just right. And that's what they're taught. Like yeah. that no means like she don't really mean no. Mm -hmm. She just trying to She's not playing hard to get. Yeah, I'm playing hard to mm -hmm. get. And I'm like, no, no, it's really, I really mean no. Like, get your hands on me. But let's 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 talk about a subject that divides the black community, and it's not just against men and women. Mm -hmm. It is against if you are a fan of this man or not. Y'all know who I'm talking about, Robert. Well, everybody want to step to the whatever. But let's talk about the fact that there was legit people saying those girls knew what they were doing. Girls, girls, those girls knew what they were doing. Well, their parents knew that they were trying to. You can't make somebody do something that they know is wrong. And I don't care who touched you, when they touched you, how they touched you. I feel for you. But why would you visit that same trauma on somebody else? Yeah. It's but a you know, decision. That's the, the crazy thing. One of my friends talked to me about that a while ago. He said it's normally 50-50. If, if you do, you either go one or the other. You either totally stray away from that or you turn to that same, you know, um, mm -hmm. harm or whatever. So that's something psychological that I, I, I feel. So look, regardless, first of all, let me say this. Mm -hmm. I didn't really dig deep into that art killer stuff. And I'm going to tell you why. That ain't none of my fucking business. And I feel like sometimes we like put so much into celebrity stuff like i, I just couldn't didn't want to read all the details because mm -hmm. once you once you hear it and, and read it you can't unsee it i hate that those things happen to him and those other people mm -hmm. i think it's wrong regardless i don't care how amazing of artist he is if mm -hmm. you hurting people that shit is wrong that's fucked up and there's no other details i need to hear same way i felt about yep. michael same way i felt about what was because what R, 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 kelly had another issue with Aaliyah too right Oh, R. Kelly had married Aaliyah so that he could help, okay, allegedly help her to have an abortion because he had gotten her pregnant. When they got married, she was, I want to say she was either 16 or 15 by the time they got married. They had already been having sexual relations how old was he at that time? for three, how about this? It doesn't matter. They had started having sex when she was 12. Oh, wow. So I don't care if he was 24, she was 12. Right. I don't care right. if he was 21, she was 12. Right. And I don't want to hear that you have that much in common with a 12 year old, a 13 year old right. or a 14 year old. And I will be the first to say, I was definitely a senior in high school, dating a man, dating a man that was 28. And you know, I'm grown thinking, oh, you That's know what, well, I'm mature and this, that, and the third. And it's like, when I got older, you looked at him like a freak, didn't yeah, you? Like, yeah, like at 28, what could you possibly have I in had, common with an 18 year old? I had the same experience, a guy that I used to talk to in high school. So I was in a band in mm -hmm. high school and they used to have the college kids come over and help us. Yes. So that was how I started to see him. Mm -hmm. And you know, like now that we're grown, like even when I got to college and I wised up like, wait a minute, yeah. you nasty. Oh, no. Exactly. And so, you know, he be still trying to reach out like, I don't understand what I did. You do understand what you yeah, did. Yeah, you were you, grooming. You, you were grooming me. You were taking advantage of the situation. Yep. And, you know, like, I think amongst women, too, because, okay, one of my mom's friends, her husband recently died. He was like 20 something years older than her. They got together when she was 17. See. And I'm like, yo. Like, how, how do your parents, you know, like, what, what, when did that become okay? Yeah. But it, it really is, you know, in, in our society or whatever, like. And I mean, I know some people that, let's say you're 40 and you meet somebody that's 60. That, I mean, that's maybe, different. maybe, because I'm still looking at you like, you're closer to my dad's age. Or, you know, I'm still, and me, I done already said it before. If there's that much of an age difference, I'm like, so.
So when do I need to start changing your diapers? Like I right, can't right, get right. down with that. Right, right, right. Now and I, I'm a person I like all ages. I like the young. I like the older. You know, it all depends on about personality. But I have mm -hmm. just been more mindful of why is it that your old tail won't talk to me? That part. Well, I, and I understand people have preference. You know, and mm -hmm. I do understand men like older women. But what is it really, sir? That's keeping you out of your own age bracket. That you know part. I mean? That part. And Why can't times, you get somebody your own age? And a lot of times, I feel like it's about experience. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I dated a man that was like 13, 14 years older than me at one mm -hmm. time, and I felt like we didn't last long because you were pulling things that I know if you were dating an older woman, you wouldn't have did that shit. You yeah. know, but because you felt like I was younger, mm -hmm. less experienced, mm -hmm. so that's what makes me stay away from older men because I'm like. Y'all be a little manipulative on a different level. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, and even the younger guys. So, like, I won't date, again, if you're more than five years younger than me, I'm not going to do it for a variety of reasons. Before I had my child, I was like, I, I'm i not trying to be your teacher. Like, yeah. I don't know if this is a fetish you or whatever. you like seasoned already. You know, but not <laughs> only that, my thing was, you know, I had met this one kid and he, ooh, child, he was fine. But I was like... I wouldn't do that to you because you need to be living all of your best life right now. I have a child. You're coming into a ready-made family. And then when I think about like, because believe it or not, I'm 37 and the 20, between 21 to 27 be on my ass hard. Yes. And I'm just like, you know, I feel like that would be weird for me to even try to take interest in you. Like my siblings are your age. My that sisters part. Are 21 and 25, and I took care of them growing up. It just that doesn't part. seem like the level of attraction. And I get that people are like, oh, you're mature, it's not about ages, whatever. It's just like you look like a kid to me, you know. That part, like, and it's not, it's not about your level of maturity because you can be 70 and have the maturity level of a 13 year old, right? But it's about the, you know, I. I'm sorry, there are different, and it doesn't matter how much you grew up with somebody older than you or whatever, there's certain things that you're just not going to get. Mm -hmm. There are generational divides. I don't care how you want to bust it up. Great. Music, food, history, you know, movies, just all of that. Walls and values, even. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I have a lot of issues when it comes to the whole R. Kelly thing because, again, yes, he had his issues. But there were the people that were supporting his issues. Yep. And they blamed it on the girls as well. And it always seems to come mm -hmm. down to those girls knew better. Those girls shouldn't have did this. Mm -hmm. Even, and you know, I was on Mike Tyson's side the whole time. But even that, well, sh what was she doing coming up to his room? You mean to tell me? I like, so I have to monitor myself so much to keep you from doing something what is that saying about you as a man and you know that's really the truth about if you think about everything when i think about when i meet a man from start to finish how i deal with him mm -hmm. it's everything about your safety because you just don't know what type of person they're going to be what mm -hmm. types of things because i have been out with men that i had a really good time with they were super respectful and when we got behind closed doors they turned into a wolf you know exactly what I mean? so exactly you just, you you do, you constantly like, well, should I wear this? It's like a thought process of everything you do. Can I say this? What time can I call or answer? Because mm -hmm. I don't want him to think that this is an open door for you to come in yep. and, and take advantage or have my body. You know yep. what I mean? It's just being so objectified. Like that's the end goal for everything. Exactly. Exactly. Like, and it doesn't matter if you're grown or if you're a child. And we, there has to be a point where we all say, okay, wait a minute, that's a baby. Yep. You have yep. to protect that child. I don't care if she's fast, then maybe you need to talk to her and ask who's been touching you. Mm -hmm. And you know what's crazy? It's like a a, a jealousy thing too amongst yes. Um Yes. I don't know if y'all watch P Valley. I love it. Uh, Uncle Clifford, Mercedes. Anyway. So, Down in the valley when right. the girls get naked. That's my <laughs> so um, the most recent episode. So Mercedes, if you don't know, quick story. Mercedes yes. has a baby at 15 with an older, a grown man, but she lied to him and told him she was 18. Mm -hmm. Either way it goes, he was married, they had a baby, and his wife chose to raise a child. So anyway, fast forward to current time, the daughter is grown. She Well, mm -hmm. she's high school. She introduced, Mercedes introduces her to a man that she's interested in, uh -huh. and baby, 
You should have seen that jealousy she, jump out of her so bad toward and, her daughter. But wait, instead of looking at him like, hey, yeah, she was looking at her daughter because her daughter did give him the. Cause yeah, he, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it too. You know, lying though. He you lying. know, mm. but. I, I was honestly surprised at how forward her daughter was, but yeah. I was really more taken aback at how angry her mother got yep. at, at her. her. Yeah. Exactly. Like, you know, it was just, but that's that's a common trend, yep. okay? I've had um, instances, so many people sit in my chair and tell me stuff they don't, wouldn't tell nobody, but, mm -hmm. you know, the instances of where women have told me that they mom knew. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? And then not only did you not protect me, you resented me. You started yep. being mean to me because yep. your you man. You me, yeah. Yes, because yes. your man is it's looking me. at me or, you know, he touched me and you're like, oh, you're lying. Yep. You know damn well I'm not lying. And it's just a, it's a thing that a lot of women have to heal from because not only have I been violated, mm -hmm. that some, some way I can't, you're not even going to give me the common decency to acknowledge my yep. feelings or, you know, what happened. So or it's I'm like not protected layers. in a place that I should be. You should always be protected in your home. Absolutely. And, you know, speaking of protected, like, you know, where are we safe is one of my questions because I don't know if you guys are aware and most recently in the news, the Brazilian surgeon gets caught. Um, he was sexually assaulted the woman while she was under getting her C-section. Mm -hmm. And, and that almost made me cry. And yep. I'm just saying because I've been almost sexually assaulted awake. Mm -hmm. So I was like, can you imagine how, because you know your body, regardless of what your mind remembers, your body keep counting. Exactly. Anything negative happened to you emotionally or harmful or whatever, it lives in your body. Yep. So like, you know, she, it's a lot of people walking around, don't even understand what happened to them because you don't, your mind done blocked it out, but your body has held on to it. So to think that she under, she thinking she's safe. She exactly. going to get a C-section, trying to deliver her baby, and you sick, twisted, gonna doing something to her while she's part. Under? That part, that part. So it's just weird being like super sexualized and then mm -hmm. being chastised about femininity on top of that. That part. You know, like, and I think about like uh, women that wear um, the burkas and things like that. Yeah. They're still sexually assaulted. Like, exactly. how, how do you, you exactly. can't see that behind? They kind of had their hands covered, like but all they'll those still things find a way to, say. to blame the woman. Yeah. And it's crazy because I remember with my cousin. So growing up, I had like I had the best family relationship, even though I was, you know, squabbling with my cousins. <laughs> love you, Ham. Love you, Nikki. But like my cousins, my god cousins, they were all so very overprotective of me to where I remember me and my one cousin Chad and I think it was my other cousin Reggie. We were walking. Um, in New York and this dude I didn't even know that it had happened and you know this was back when the painted on jeans was a real yeah, thing you had jumped in the thighs. oh my goodness yeah. I, I had to peel them up on me and so as we're walking my cousin Chad is about to fight this dude he's like what you looking at talking about dude and I'm like oh I didn't even realize you know because in my mind's eye it was I'm just walking I'm minding my business but he was directing it as do you know you ain't supposed to be like first of all you don't know if this is my woman exactly but bigger than that why are you breaking your neck on some whatever now mind you i love my cousin chad he was also overprotective to where he would try to fight any boyfriend i had that's a whole other story but then i also had another cousin where her boyfriend and i was a little kid but her boyfriend you know i was like oh and i'm giving him a hug because i would only come to visit on summers and he gave me a kiss and she was like she said she had to stop herself because she was about to be like what the at me and then she had to pull him to the side later like don't do that anymore mm -hmm. but her initial thought was bitch you kissing my man and i'm like i, I ain't doing nothing I'm just yeah. yeah so it definitely happens like that but you know i i do think that this goes back to me I always wanting to pour into younger women it's what those mm -hmm. conversations come up and i know a lot of parents so people drop their kids off all the time. And I, t I ask them them questions, you know, mm -hmm. somebody touching you, somebody doing something to mm -hmm. you, you know, would you tell me like, you know, is just a safe space? Cause you're not, a lot of parents are having those conversations, but there's a lot of parents that aren't. Yeah. And there are, you know, <coughs> things that are happening to people all the time. And like these conversations gotta be started. And just yeah. like you said, boys will be how you raise them. Those are conversations you gotta have with your, your sons and your nephews and stuff mm -hmm. like that too. And I think what's even bigger, we were talking about educating ourselves, 
there has got to be some help for men that are men and women who yes. are dealing with a partner that has been sexually assaulted yes. or abused. Because there's a lot of layers to that thing. Exactly. You know? It might make you over sexualized and maybe that's why he hoeing all over the place. Mm -hmm. Or that's why he can't connect to you in a real way because somebody was using sex to do that to him. Right. To traumatize. So it's just like a lot of layers to it. But as a whole, like black folks we have our own set of issues that are so deep and so plaguing but that sexuality is a big mm -hmm. big one it drives the clothes we, we yes. wear you know how we speak to each other our hair you know like when i think about um cardi megan like megan just did she just i just saw mm -hmm. on the internet she dressed up like sailor moon you know the, the uh the cartoon <laughs> she wore like the sailor suit she had the blonde yeah. hair too Megan was at a uh, thing, so she looked like Sailor Moon from the front, and we turn around, whole ass out. So it's like everything is in, and that's cool, Megan. That's what you want to do. I love that you want to do. Cool, but it's just like that's everything. That's all our kids see. Mm -hmm. If you look at their conversations on their TV shows, it yeah. all is is leading up to something sexual. What movie did I watch? Well, you know, I can't stand the kitty pageants. Yes. Those little girls, and I mean, John yeah, the little dog baby. Exactly, but at what point are you like, no, this is a little, like, so let me let this child be a child. I can't stand to see little girls with nails and all. It's like, yes. let that baby be a baby. I'll never forget, um, me and my mom was going to take Kennedy um, school shopping, and we was at Sears. Belts or Sears, one of them, and I think she might have been about 9 or 10, mm -hmm. and my mom was so livid. We had love out the store. They had red panties, y'all. For a job? Yeah! <laughs> you know, she was just like so upset by it yeah. because she was like, do you know what type of thing that's pushing? What you know what exactly. I mean? Like, red men see red panties. I mean, grown men see red panties. Yeah. And they're like, oh, oh, oh. Exactly. Your little girl need the white ones with the days of the week on it. Like, you know. But wait a minute, let me push back. That also brings us back to the whole you're right. you at you're blaming the child the female has to be responsible for somebody else's actions. So with that said, we're gonna take a quick break and regroup and have a drink and bring the pressure down because y'all doing dirty stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> be right back. <laughs> So y'all saw the teas that we had going on, but there are so many other teas that I just love to talk about. The teas that I like to drink, um, and this is just me, I'm a tea snob now. Um, I like teas. I like a bag. Nah. Well, and you can get a bag and put all this stuff in it, but I like to see the product. <laughs> <laughs> I like to know that this is really some things, some nuts, some berries, some trees, stuff that I can put in my hair and go back to Africa. <laughs> it does. It gives you all of the things that you could ever think that you wanted. Um, so as you can tell, I'm telling you it is. Mason jars are your friend. If you get these, you can literally put one tablespoon of any of your teas, your good teas, or even your bags. I'm not gonna pay too much. And you can put it in here and just literally refill it. So you can fill it up once. This is a good two and a half cups. Fill it up a second of time. Yeah. Because this is the real stuff, not the tea bags. And the thing about tea is tea, you have to get your water in. A lot of people struggle with tea. And you think you have to have a certain amount of water, a certain ounces of water, and you want to drink tea. But this counts as both. You know, you mm -hmm. could, if you are struggling with water, um, make it a little more watery as the day goes on, but that's still a good way to get your nutrients in and gives you the flavor. Exactly. Yeah. Like for me, I'm not a fan of just plain water. I like to be able to taste some kind of flavor. So with this, the first batch is always like, woo, I'm really feeling cold. it. Then the second one, it's like, okay, you can even do this a third time and just really mellow it out. You know, as long as you see some color. Yes. As long as you see some color, you're good. So um, this is called one of my favorites, Fat Back, Fat Black Pussycat. Say that three times. <laughs> this one over here is Tea Tots. So clearly, they both do different things. Um, they have different elements about it. This is good for detoxifying your kidney, your liver. You can find different types of teas that detox your body in different ways. There's also, and as you can tell, 
I am a Calabash fanatic. But, so Calabash is black owned by Dr. Senyata Amen. I love her, she's up in DC. She has a bunch of different teas. She has um, powders and stuff that you saw put in, you know, our different, our different um, smoothies and whatnot. And the other thing, when you're using tea bags a lot of times, or at least the teas that come in tea bags, the tea bags are bleached. So that might give you some negative, it might give you some negative health issues that you don't want. So when you get stuff like this, that you have to strain, that's when you know that's look. And while she's straining y'all and showing you how to pour, I'm gonna tell you about some of this uh, detox tea. So the detox is a blood, liver, and kidney detox. It has hibiscus, juniper berry, dandelion, sarsaparilla, burdock, turmeric, mm, I don't know what this one is, Paul de Arco, ginger, spices, and love. You say Paul de Rocco? I'm going to call to fight you. Paul de Rocco. And our other tea, I got Black Pussycat. Um, it's an old two legendary New York City nightclub. It has Jamaican hibiscus flowers, rose hips, wild harvested cranberries, wild elderberries, and love. And as you know, elderberry is definitely good for your immune system to help um, keep y'all safe out here with the now monkey box and rum. Man, and everything else that they got coming up. So one thing that you will see, I love different kinds of strainers. My strainer that I got are copper. Amazon, cheap as shit, go get them while you can. But it's good for straining and you don't have to use a tea bag. Or if you do get a tea bag, you want them that are natural, not bleached, etc. And copper has a lot of healing properties, so they say you know, drinking out of copper cups helps to help fuel uh, your detox system too. Mm -hmm. So, salute. Yeah. Drink your tea, love your tea. Thanks for coming back and joining us. Yes, welcome, welcome. So let's let's pivot just a little bit. I want to talk about when you are in a relationship, but you don't feel like you have a say mm -hmm. in whether or not you can have sex, or you have a say in how sex is had. Like let's say, put him on a condom. Oh. You know that your man is cheating. You don't want to have anything that he's picking up from this person, that person, whatever, or that he's spreading around, let me say it that way, but you're too scared to say no or to say put on a condom. That's a real, real thing. And I know it's some people probably going to be watching this like, hell no. It's serious. Mm -hmm. I have had a few clients express those things to me. Um, one of them, she had a latex allergy. Oh, wow. And... He only he would not buy or you know do other use different mm -hmm. types of condoms mm -hmm. and so she was like she was constantly dealing with being irritated. I was thinking, mm -hmm. thinking to myself, bitch, you got what? Sorry, For bitch, real? you got one pussy. For real, just one. There's not you another one. You can go it. nowhere. Right. Yeah, so I'm like you know, but it went back to her feeling that pressure a mm -hmm. to stay in a relationship, yep. which is a whole another different thing. Mm -hmm. But also this notion we're in a relationship as a woman. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Yep. This is what's going to keep him happy. This mm -hmm. is what's going to keep him here. I have to give myself to him. Yes, and even mm -hmm. to the you know because a lot of men say. Um, you can't take sex away or you can't use it as a weapon. You, we can't do that, but you also can't you do it as like it's a given either. Exactly. And I think that that's where a lot of things happen. Because um, I've been out with men. We've been on dates. We've had a good time. I had one ask me, so when are you going to be ready? And I said, you know, I bust that line because I'm like, what we finna go? You know, ready for what? The 22nd of February. That's when I'm going to be ready. <laughs> Like, I, I had another guy say to me, um, because we had just exchanged phone numbers, mm -hmm. I thought he was handsome, we didn't even really get deep in the conversation, he sent me a picture of him, and then a dick pic, I was like, damn, slow down, and he was like, he just went off, that's what's wrong with you women now, you think you're gonna get a man heart first, we have to have our needs met, and he like went on this rant. And what he was trying to do was break me down. Yep. And it make you feel, feel like, like yes. yes. And yes. make me feel like I'm never going to have a man yes. because I'm not going to fuck when they get ready for mm -hmm. me to fuck. And I'm like, you know, you got to be comfortable. Like, first of all, this is what I tell young, girl, young girls. You can't unfuck nobody. Nope. So make a good choice the first time. Yep. And, you know, not only 
men don't understand we are deposited in too. Yep. You coming inside my body, my open orifice, you know, uh, trying to drop it off your seed, mm -hmm. your spirituality. It's so many different things involved. But they do understand that because let you cheat on your man. He can't get over that. Oh, yeah. 99.9% of all men, unless you cheat and they know you cheated, oh, yeah, they leave the relationship ass. is over. Absolutely, they can't trust you no more, you stink, all that. Yeah, like all they see is that person swagging it the way that they couldn't swag it and that's why you left them. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you have to, we have to get to the point to where it's, you have to love your body more, you have to protect your body more. If you're with a man that's cheating, first and foremost, he could possibly give you something you that you can't, that. yeah. Cause there are such high levels of STDs mm -hmm. within black women because of who's coming back to us doing whatever they were doing. And that loyalty that we have that's killing us. Mm -hmm. um, so 42% in 2018, 2020, between those two years, 42% of the new HIV cases were black women. Yep. And you know, like, most of those women are in monogamous relationships, that part. you know, all of those different things like that. Black women are seven times higher to have gonorrhea than white women mm -hmm. and five times higher to have chlamydia than white women. Yep. And I think it comes from that our voice part, our choice, yes. you know, being able to say, and, and I also think it has to do with health care. Let's, yes. let's talk about that too. Yes. You know, the availability of care, the availability of health care around your work schedule, mm -hmm. things like that. But the things that we can't control, like allowing your partner to come into your body when you know he's not clean yeah like that's or the feeling that you know the um the only people that get that are those type of women so you don't want to say anything or when you do go maybe the doctors or the staff is like oh you got that or you just mm -hmm. don't want to you know you want to blame whatever women your man was sleeping with or as i love to break down you trying to fuck him into a relationship. Absolutely. And, and it's know, not going to happen. Yep. If he's going to be with you, he's going to be with you. But if you think that you're going to smash him and do all the tricks that nobody else happens to know in the world. That's going to keep him giving. He doing it with somebody else. Yeah, it's a lost cause. So we have to, there's too many things that we really need to start talking about when it comes to our sexuality and our femininity. Mm -hmm. We are not tied to how many men we can get to break their neck and look at us. Mm -hmm. And I'll be the first to say, back in the day, I would be going to the club in my sheer outfit and you know, my little thong bikini and you know, my little fake tattoo before I'd actually got a tattoo. <laughs> and I dare somebody to say something to me or touch me in a way that wasn't supposed to. Right. But it doesn't, it's not about you trying to get something because sometimes females do have to fill out their sexuality mm -hmm. and see what they can do, mm -hmm. see what they can grab, mm -hmm. get that attention. But it's still up to you to be like, nah, this is, this is my line. Yep. And you can have, you know, I do believe that all the way up to the moment I have been about to go there with a nigga then I was like, mm, mm -hmm. I'm not feeling it. And I'm like, that's it. You know, a lot of people will argue, oh, you don't got that far or whatever you should go through with it. You don't have to. That's your choice. Exactly. It's your choice. It's your body. And it's you, you the one that has to deal with consequences one way or the other, Absolutely. especially if he refuses to put on a condom. Yeah. So if you are with somebody and you don't even have to be in a relationship, let's keep it all a buck. Yeah. Let's say you meet somebody and you're hot, he's hot, y'all heavy, let's get it in. And you're like, okay, put on a condom. And he's like, oh no, and still trying to go in. That's a no, you can say, er, flag on the play, we're out. Mm -hmm. And also in regard to us not allowing men to objectify us, you're mm -hmm. more than that. And if you can't respect my wishes about my vagina, then you don't have, you shouldn't have access to it, my heart or my head or anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, and then oftentimes, you know, men will make women feel bad yes. for requesting something or, you know, take away the affection or whatever, just so that you kind of fold or break. It's so many different le levels mm -hmm. to how they try to break you down. but. You gotta be securing yourself. And sometimes it takes time. Yeah. You know, and if you if you with somebody right now that does that to you, that doesn't mean that you have to accept it anymore. That part. And none of your none of your friends, none of your girlfriends, your mama, your your grandmama, nobody should be telling you that it's your fault. Or, oh well he did that, but you know, you ain't gonna find another man. Yep. 
maybe sometimes you need to be chill by yourself. Absolutely. Because if you're with a man that's abusing you that way, especially if you have children, and not to say that <clears throat> it makes a difference one way or the other, but if you have children, you got to be so careful yeah, you with who you're bringing around your kids. Absolutely. And you can't blame it. You can't put it on the kids or be mad at the kid because now you got to be single because you brought a whole freakazoid or, you know, Bill Cosby into your joint. Now, let's talk about Bill. And hold on. Before we jump on Bill, watch those women, too, because there's some women molesters out here, too. Yes. And children. So, my ask your friend, your kids, when they coming from their friends' houses. I have a few clients and friends that have been molested by children their age, their peers. Oh, wow. So, you know, just be mindful, mamas. Yeah. And I'll be the first one. You, mm, my, mm, my son ain't been to nobody's house yet. Um, I just... I, we couldn't go to nobody else when no. we were kids. And I used to think my mama was so harsh for that mm -hmm. but when i got to college and met how many girls was towed up and yes. like I, people who have been sexually abused is somebody that, that i pray for that group every day because i cannot imagine what you go through and how you feel and you know different things like that so that's that's something that people are really plagued with but you know and is, the statistics are high yeah. for ex black girls and black boys mm -hmm. being sexually assaulted there are so many children that are being assaulted yes. right underneath their own you know whether it's church yeah. whether it's in the home whether daycare. it's at school yeah. oh my gosh daycare yes. a lot of those kids can't even talk, talk. they're not yep. old enough yet yep so i mean you you really have to one you have to talk to your kids but two we have to start changing the dynamic it can't be i don't i don't care what a child does i don't care what a child wears i don't care how sweet they are how a child cannot in any way, shape, or form entice an adult Absolutely. that is not already like that yep. to do anything sexual to them, with them. I don't even like to be honest with you when the little girls want to kiss on my son because I'm like, time out. Right. Let it be the other way around and my son is running around saying, hey, right. exactly, y'all trying to call the cops. Yep. Yep. And women have those same issues. But going back to Oville. So, Mr. Cosby. Nobody wanted to acknowledge because, yes, we know he gave us the Cosby show. He gave us a different world. He gave us Fat Albert. He gave us Dad is Great. He gave me chocolate cake. He gave us all of these different things, right? Nobody wants to acknowledge, yeah, Bill Cosby, he was drugging people. And he admitted it. So at what point do you stop caping for somebody that is doing something that is harming women right period right you can if you want to do ignore the first five because I, I was in that group i was like i don't believe it they got to 10 i was like oh uh, they got to 15 20 what they got up to what 60 all right he did it yeah y'all okay with saying that um uh oj did it I ain't say he raped anybody, but I think Nicole also said that he used to rape her in the marital bed. He would force her to have sex. So again, it. yeah. If y'all can say all these other people did it, you need to give up the ghost on Bill Cosby and R. Kelly. If you still need to step to the name of love with his music, knock yourself out. But I don't know any grown man. I'm gonna look at you side eye. If you still gotta be sitting there dancing and bopping to uh, AJ Nothing But a Number, or you remind me of my G. Or my mind is telling me no, but my body is telling me yes. What kind of rape culture bullshit does that sound like? Now, you know what's crazy? Since all of those things came out, like when I go back and mm -hmm. listen to his music, a lot of that stuff, you like, whew, that, that's intense that you you even felt comfortable enough to express it that way and make Bold. it seem like it was normal. And I think that that's why um, I really want to talk more about this rap music and hip hop culture. Yes. Because they push that sentiment onto younger men and women, mm -hmm. but then want to you know say oh you shouldn't be doing that what that's all y'all talk about again bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks and it's okay to take advantage of their body and then make them get an uber home ain't no fun if the homies can't have nothing mm -hmm. put it in your mouth now i'm not trying to say anything about all these songs that i happen to know by heart <laughs> but at the end of the day you really got to start thinking okay the, the thing that people used to say back in the day was, well, if they ain't talking about you, what you mad about? They talk about somebody, though. And how is it okay? And when does it become a point to where people are like, you forget that, okay, you weren't talking about me, but I'm here. Mm -hmm. And you pushing up. 
And you know, it's a, the generational quietness around sexuality mm -hmm. is the sicker part, and that's what keeps holding us back farther. Yes. Um, I have a close friend. Her mama was molested by a family member that they still see on a regular basis. She will not say a word. Wow. And you know, so it's like how many of those situations, and and not only did she endure the trauma. But she does. She didn't share those things with her daughter or how to be protected. You know wow. what I'm saying? Yeah. So you run it into kids going like generations and generations of yep. those same exact acts happening, and you know it's like people know. I have um, a close client that expressed to me that her family knew about her uncle mm -hmm. raping his own daughter, and they still talk to him they still commune with mm -hmm. him all of those things they knew mm -hmm. so it's like as a victim where do you feel safe exactly. who do you talk to so it's like a generational thing that we gotta stop being quiet about and i'll be the first one i'm sorry i will put you out of the cookout i won't talk to you okay. i found out like late in life that a cousin was actually molested by another cousin and i had no idea and when i found that out i was like i can't you I know i love you. my cousin I can't in good conscience be like, oh, well, you should still come around to the family picnic knowing that, okay, it's basically her or him. And at the end of the day, when it really comes down to it, if you're not against this type of rape culture, this type of over-sexualization, this type of assault, you're supporting it. So if you can't talk against somebody being okay yep. with touching little girls or you know with your homeboy yep. that likes some young yes. those tenderonies and you're I, supporting it and same thing with the old man um mm -hmm. i dated a guy who his daddy was in his 60s and he was like my daddy love 18 and 20 year olds mm -hmm. and when he said that i was thinking to myself like and you, he got that? The kids that, you know that it was hard. just like that you know hard. it was just a lot for me you know um, but they said it like it wasn't that. My mm -hmm. daddy loved 18, 20 year olds. And I was like, oh my gosh. Like that is just, but that's their norm. Yeah. You know? And nobody says, yo, that ain't cool. Mm -hmm. So you mean to tell me when you have a child that's 18 to 20, you going to be okay with them being over there? Or are you going to blame them if something happens? And that's what we need to start getting away from. You can't keep blaming women mm -hmm. for the actions of others. A woman did not rape herself. A woman did not entice you to come and grab her up. And quite frankly, this has to be said, I don't care if you think that it's a compliment, but if you want to sit there and be like, hey girl, or hey, or whatever, and I don't speak back, that's my goddamn right. Absolutely. You don't get to tell me that I'm supposed to talk back. I don't care how you feel. You don't know what's going on in my life. Mm -hmm. And I don't owe you that I'm obligated to you. But that is Ooh. definitely something as women we deal with the pressures of, so. Um, you know, encouragement out to people that are struggling in these situations or if you need somebody to talk to, check Please into your, your EAP at your job. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of free therapy services if you don't feel comfortable talking to your friends and family. And if you got friends and family that have been through these things or are, you know, struggling with it, look online at some ways to help them cope or some different things, you know, because sometimes people just want to be like, oh, I'm so sorry. That ain't doing shit. At all. You know. Talk to me about some real things. Help talk to me on my worst day, because mm -hmm. that also was a reason why a lot of men and women are unsuccessful in relationships. Yep, you have this childhood trauma that you haven't healed from. In, in all honesty, some people never heal from being violated that like that. That so part. also being able to accept them in their trauma and in their pain mm -hmm. and how they express themselves. But when you see wrong, call that shit out. Exactly. Don't be cool with your homeboy. You know he be hitting girls, raping girls. Pushing up on girls. Mm -hmm. Don't be still buying your uncle no Christmas present when you know he's filling up on y'all little cousins and stuff like that. And don't think it's funny because your homeboy like to go shopping at the high school. Yes. It's not cool. It's, it's not, not cute. cool. Not cool. So. so with that said, it was a heavy subject. I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say. Um, if you want to push back, get at me. I don't care. I'm here for it. <laughs> All, the right, right, right. <laughs> All the smoke. All the smoke. Y'all know me. I might be more zen, but I still, you know. <laughs> So, thank you for tuning in today. Yes, we appreciate you. We hope that we helped you in some way. Hope that it was relatable in some mm -hmm. sort. 
and we just ask you to come back and check us out. Yes, so comment, like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends to subscribe too. Yes, and check us out on Wednesdays at 7.30. We'll be on live, have an extension to these conversations, and you know, possibly add a little bit more. So don't miss out. Yes, so with that said, enjoy the rest of your day. And whatever you do, be good to you, be kind to you, but most of all, be all of you. Toodles. Bye.